reasons why people who get sexually abused don't tell anybody, don't report it, mm. that type of situation. So I'll start off and then you could feed off of that. Okay. One is it's a family member that's abusing them and they don't want to get him in trouble. They could have been threatened by the family member, several things in there, but because it's a family member, it will change the dynamics of everything. And they're very concerned about that besides other things we're going to mention, but that is one of the uh, big reasons. Okay. And the percentage of people who are sexually abused by a family member is huge. Otherwise, those who get sexually assaulted outside of the home or molested, that type of thing is a lot rarer, but being a family, somebody they know, that's what it is. Somebody that, somebody they know or a family member. Another reason, because maybe they were a minor when it happened. And at this point, maybe they are like 13 years old. My sexual abuse as a child stopped when I was 10 years old, but at age 13 is when I became very suicidal all the night terrors, all the PTSD was just flowing out of me. And like some who were abused as a minor because they felt like they were not forced or they did not fight it. In my abuse that I had, I did not fight it. I Well, I did once and I paid for it heavily. All the other times that I was abused, I just went ahead and laid there and played dead and disassociated myself from my body. And that's how I survived. Same here. Yes. So when you say minor, you're talking about it's the, the age and the response. But I feel like there's something else you're getting to about the whole minor thing as well. Which would be? Uh, they're a minor, so they weren't well, the consensual thing, whatever. <laughs> well, anytime abuse, sexual abuse happens between a minor and an adult, it is a crime. And not all kids know that. That is correct. It's not they something don't. that a lot of people sit down and explain that to a child. Correct. Yeah. And I, it's understandable. But when I'm talking about minor, I'm just talking about a child um, and their struggle with the thoughts that go through their head while I wasn't forced or I didn't fight it. Yeah. Or I didn't tell them stop or whatever. Correct. Correct. They just wouldn't get it over with because they didn't know. Because they knew there would be an end, especially if it happened to them often, there would always be an end. And in my case, I knew there would always be an end. Correct. And that was same with my case as well. Yeah. I just, it's not that I let it happen. It was like the person's bigger than me. I don't have an option. I can't walk away, can't run away. You know, there's a lot of can'ts in the situation. So it was same as you. Right. I just played dead, let it happen, get off, you know, go away and try to live still. And try with to the, live still. Yes. Still try to be, yeah, you can't walk away from the nightmare, but you can at least try to, yeah, you play dead. As your book says, you play dead and just disassociate with the, the circumstance at the moment. You survive. You do what you have to do to survive. But we're not taught otherwise you don't have a class you know there's not a class on that no yeah and most parents don't go around telling you stuff now I had that I did actually have that though mm. I had a parent putting little brochures out and I had a parent who was a bear who was also abusing me agreeing with the things that the other parent was telling me you know you make sure you tell somebody if anybody ever hurts you so it was a lot of contradiction going on. We'll just say that. I would say so. Yeah. But being a minor, you don't know any better. Correct. Um, they hold off after they've been told lies or have been threatened 
uh, or been told they need to keep it a secret. Yeah. And so that is one of the reasons why it hasn't been brought to light because these things are very fear driven. Very much so. Yeah. As well yeah. as shame driven. Yes. Yeah. Now the shame wasn't thrown at me, but the, the fear for sure, it was that I would be the, the breaker of my mother. You know, I would be the one bringing pain to my mother. It wasn't the circumstance that would be doing it. it was because I was telling a truth of what was happening and it would break my mom's heart. It would make her sad. It would hurt her. Right. And he displaced the pain to you instead of him taking responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And then from that spins, it spins a whole lot of other things, such as we're now responsible for our family dynamic. We're now responsible for keeping our parents together. We're now responsible for, this is going to sound stupid, but still responsible for making sure the family looks perfect in the public eye. That because we have this picture, good. we have this picture of how a family's supposed to look. And like for me, it was always Little House in the Prairie. You know, I always wanted to become like Little House in the Prairie. I always wanted my father to be like Charles Ingalls. That was always my dream, you know, to have that kind of family dynamic. And if I told, dream would, you know, in an instant. Never be, yeah, there would never be that chance. So, and that was the truth. That is what happened. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know it counts, but it wasn't your fault. No. No. Uh, I know you have other things on your list. <laughs> um, well, you weren't aware of your rights. That's why you didn't tell. You didn't realize being such a small child and growing up to be aware. And we did mention that slightly, but I want to make sure to bring that up okay. as well as guilt. You mentioned it right there. Guilt was placed upon you. You weren't even supposed to carry something like that right. at all. And here you were faced with guilt, blame, and the avoidance of them taking any responsibility. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. You said that the one before that was about, um, we don't, what did you say? not knowing our rights. Right. Girl, when I did report it and did go to the police, there was a new freedom. I'm not just saying freedom from the abuse, but there was a new place of arrival for me of knowing my power. I never thought I had power mm. until uh, telling what happened to the police. Because then at that point, there was no longer that, that hold over me, that oppression over me. It was, it was finally a ha. <laughs> and like, it was like roles. I could have manipulated it and roles changed in the sense of now I'm the one in power, but I didn't take advantage of that. All I did was you can take me and buy me a dress. Then now I can go out somewhere and I know you're not going to touch me. <laughs> But I learned my power that day mm. that moving forward, there was, there was a power I was never told about up until then. So there's, there's a myth that we are, there's a myth that we're even given while we're abused, that we are powerless. Why speak up? Because we have no power. Why speak up? Because nobody's going to hear you. Why speak up? Because it's not going to change anything. Why speak up? Because we only see the worst that's going to happen. Another item is avoidance. Let's just avoid it. Let's not talk about it. And let's just move on. Yeah. Especially if you're being abused all the time and it's a continuous more than one time event. It's just let's, like you had said before, just hurry up. Let's get this over with type thing. They're showing they're all powerful you're showing that you're vulnerable. Mm. And then to tell somebody makes you even more vulnerable. And that's the last thing you want since you already are this victim to somebody else's power play. Yeah. 
And so that's why some people don't tell because they don't want to be more vulnerable. They don't want to get hurt even worse. Because the pain is already intense. They don't want to add another layer to the fire and just blow it bigger. Right. That's the last, the last thing you want when you're being abused. And I, I know it sounds, I know it sounds wrong, but when you're being abused, you think, you also think, well, I'd rather take this than it being this, Act. you know, right. this versus that. And so you just, you find a way to just survive through it. You just find a way to still, you carry that cross, though that's not your cross to bear. No, it is not. No, but you don't think that there's better out there and you don't think sharing that burden with someone else is going to give you anything positive. And speaking of sharing with somebody, that's one of the reasons why somebody doesn't share or reach out is because the stigmatism from the sexual abuse. Yeah. If I was to privately tell one of my siblings and they started telling everybody else, the betrayal would be huge, but also now it would be marked as somebody who's doing these things sexually with somebody else. And that'd be the last thing I'd want known as a girl. True. True. People it, have a hard time um, keeping confidentiality. It's true. I think you learn that early on as a kid, whether you're just telling a secret to somebody or whatever it is, but you learn really early on that people just have a tough time keeping confidentiality. True. And it could be simple things such as a birthday party or whatever. So you just, yeah, you've learned those things growing up that it's just Certain things are hard to trust with others. Included with that would be the cultural or religious reasons why you wouldn't want anybody to know, because that would just add more heaping shame, more heaping vulnerability on top of your situation. And it's already bad, as you said, as it is. Why do we want to go ahead and be a disgrace to the race or be a disgrace in the cultural setting that you're in. Mm. No bueno. No bueno. I think there's a whole lot we could go to there and I feel like I'm supposed to keep my tongue shut on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another reason why they don't want to share is because they don't want a medical examination. True. That's a biggie. That is a biggie because they've already felt invaded. Their privacy has already felt very much invaded. Their physical bubble has been ignored yeah. and violated. And now to get that medical examination, it is a fact, it's all of that. However, that's one of the reasons why they would hold back telling anybody. It's true. I, I know of someone who that that was feeling as abusive as the abuse mm. to them you know that it was to help them and to stop the situation going on you know that was still to them horrific because they had to show their body and they didn't want their body to be seen yes so, it's sad the last one I have for today, even though there is so many more, is people will think that they're crazy or mentally unwell. Yep. And though today's society really is focusing more, Renee, on mental health, that type of thing, it still doesn't help if you're the one that feels like this is going to impede at the way people look at you or they're feeling like you're crazy. And I've seen that as well unfortunately. Uh, it was, it went around my family. I'm just making up these things. This really didn't happen. And it was making me question after I was assaulted by the pastor, did this really happen? And I could see the bruises on my body. I had evidence, but because nobody else was believing in that moment and all this talk about here's this angry teenager and she's got a lot of issues basically 
she's crazy is what I put together. Issues mm-hmm. is one plus one equals two in my mind. Mm-hmm. And that left me wondering why I even brought it up. Why did I even try one more time? Why did I try one more time to reach out for help? Because now I'm labeled as this. And this is worse than when I was a child. Mm-hmm. Now everybody is believing that I'm mentally unwell and I'm crazy. That you're making up stories and you're- That I'm making up stories. Thank God he validated the whole situation and I was blessed, but not everybody gets that. No, they don't. (laughs) I truly realized it was a miracle of what happened there. That is for sure. But these are some of the reasons. So when those who haven't been sexually abused wonder, well, why are they telling anybody? Why didn't they tell anybody when they were little? Why didn't they tell anybody here they are as a teenager? Why? These are some of the reasons and they're not small. They're huge to us. Well, the other thing I would add to it is we're also made to believe that it's something normal. I didn't realize growing up that this was something that didn't happen in other people's homes I know that sounds that sounds crazy but that was my norm so I just thought it was what was going down in other homes I didn't realize it until I was 13 high school freshman year and they were teaching a babysitting course you can get a babysitting license they started that I'd never heard of getting a babysitting license, but they had that. And so I went to that class type thing because it made mothers feel more relaxed that the yeah. babysitter had a you know little card that they went through a course. Yeah. And in the course, they showed a movie and in it was all about children and being molested. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching it and I'm listening and I'm going, wait a minute, that was me. Mm-hmm. Though I know it was painful and though I didn't like it, and shame was attached and everything, I was like you. Somebody else in somebody else's home is going through that in my mind. And until I watched that movie and I saw it was wrong and they had a name for it, Mm -hmm. it opened my eyes. So that was a very good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Well, it switched. It's funny because I went through that babysitting class too. (laughs) Oh, you did? (laughs) Hey, (laughs) but the education of that though flipped gears for me then because before it was I thought everybody I thought it was normal you know I didn't know that it was wrong and then when I find I guess when the light was shown Mm -hmm. then I felt like I was solo and I think you you had addressed that as well I, I felt like I was alone that I was the only one then dealing with it I wasn't hearing other people talking about it. You know, nobody else shared those kind of things with me. Right. So I thought then I was the one, the only one that was, it was happening to, you know. Makes sense. So it's kind of crazy. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons why we don't tell. And many times it's out of that fear response. Right. You're trying to protect. You're already hurting. Yeah. You're trying to protect yourself. And whatever lie Satan likes to throw on top of that fear then to keep you silent, you know, because there's a spiritual piece to this as well is Satan wants you to stay silent. That's, that's one of his, I'll call it arrows. That's one of his ways of oppressing people is stay silent. Don't speak up. Don't stop evil. Speaking up, but continuing to speak up. Yeah. I only spoke up to one person. Mm-hmm. I didn't think to speak out to outside of the home. And I believe if I would have spoke up outside of the home, things possibly could have been different. I don't know. True. Different day and age. That is for sure. True. And there have been, there have been times people have come to me where they were approached and they didn't know what to do. Should I, what, what should I do? I was like, well, you gotta report it. But there's even the, when you're on the other side, when you are told 
the adult that's being told, sometimes you don't know what to do. If you kind of get in this freeze mode that you don't know if you report it or not, if the, you start questioning situation, you start analyzing and you don't act on it right away. So hmm. there, there are times that even with a child who was believed, the adult may not have done their job, their duty. They might've heard it and listened and comforted, but they didn't do the rest of the job of reporting it. And so that can be another reason why somebody doesn't keep Continue telling. That, right. Yeah. Because nothing, the goal, the goal nothing is stopped. Nothing happened. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody knows, but nothing went down from it. Yeah. And the goal is to not just have somebody believe and hear you, but an action is done. So it stops. The goal is to protect that person and stop it from happening any longer. Amen. We want the truth to be setting that person free and not keep them in a stagnate situation. Yep. You got it right. <laughs> All right. Well, that was just touching on that subject just a little bit. I wanted to make sure that it was known. So yeah. Thank you, Renee. You're welcome. Thank you.